Hi there, my fellow notebook aficionados. In recent years, fueled by Apple's push with the original MacBook Air, most manufacturers, putting together slim and super portable notebooks, are trying everything in their power to make them even slimmer year after year. While this makes for some very neat looking laptops, it is an absolute nightmare for upgradability and user repairability, and a failed SSD or bad RAM chip turns your fancy looking machine into a dead paperweight and ultimately turns precious resources into e-waste. Framework, on the other hand, is a company that built their only available laptop model, the aptly named Framework 13, around the whole concept of making it easily serviceable by you as a user yourself. And we are not just talking about storage, memory and Wi-Fi cards, but actually new CPU platforms, ports and even displays. To make that point even more straightforward, you can either get your very own Framework 13 as a pre-built or as a DIY edition, which you have to assemble and configure yourself. That is what we have in our hands today, and before we get to the core of this one, to see if the mission to more sustainability aligns with a good everyday notebook as well, let me quickly take you through the unboxing and build process for this very, very special notebook. First of all, we have to give it to Framework for their packaging. Everything comes cleanly labeled and designed, and if you also order the DIY edition, you get a lovely assembly of stickers within the box. Alongside the power adapter and separately packaged I.O. modules, more on those later, your framework comes in three main parts. The display bezel came in black, but you can also choose between grey and orange, the keyboard deck and of course the main laptop chassis with the motherboard and display pre-installed. When you order your own DIY kit, you can either choose to opt for your own memory and storage, in case you have some spare parts lying around, or order it directly from framework. Our review kit came with a very generous 2TB NVMe from Western Digital and a whopping 64 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory. Alright folks, let's put this thing together. While it may sound intimidating at first to put together your own laptop, it is insanely easy. Framework labeled everything all over the motherboard and every part comes with its own QR code that directly connects you with their very easy to follow guides on their website. So even if you do not have any experience with computer hardware, you should have absolutely no problem putting this one together. After you install both the memory and storage, the display bezel snaps in place without too much hassle magnetically. Just make sure to align it at the top first before placing the hinge cover part at the bottom. Maybe I should have looked at their manual too. For the keyboard deck, all you have to do is connect the cable for the touchpad and then even here, the piece snaps in place with magnets, so no fragile plastic clips or anything. Now all you have to do is turn this puppy around and tighten the captive screws to secure everything together nicely. And that's basically all you have to do, and really, Framework made it exceptionally easy to put this thing together, and even if you are stuck at some point, they have a vast library of guides on their website. Alongside the RAM and storage of your choosing, the 2023 framework is available in both Intel and AMD flavors, and our review unit comes with the Intel 1370p. There are two additional Intel CPUs to choose from, and for the first time this year, AMD Zen 4 APUs are also an option. And again, for example, if you own a 2022 framework and think Team Red has the better CPU option this year, you could simply order just the mainboard and replace it within your existing machine for a fraction of the cost of a completely new laptop. For those of you wondering about material quality, while the display hinge could be a bit stiffer to prevent screen wobble, overall chassis rigidity is excellent, and while the design is rather plain and subtle, it is a well-made and great feeling little performance machine. For staying in contact with the outside world, this small notebook provides average wireless transfer speeds and a pretty decent 2 megapixel webcam. The image is sharp and the sensor can even handle high contrast scenarios pretty well. Both the keyboard and the touchpad offer no reason to complain and you get quite a bit of travel with a very clear pressure point and satisfying feedback. In the I.O. area, the framework is special once again, since the company lets you freely choose your desired port layout and of course overall selection, with their handy modular approach. At the time of filming, the Framework 13 comes with four bays for your choice of connections. 
The USB-C expansion card supports USB 4, so you basically get the same feature set as Thunderbolt 4, complete with power delivery and DisplayPort Alt mode, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 module, HDMI 2.0B, 2.5 GB Ethernet, DisplayPort and a micro SD card reader. In addition, you can also choose to use one of your expansion bays for additional storage, with either 256GB or 1TB of capacity. The beauty of this system is that you never have to settle on what you are currently running, but you can change everything according to your needs at any given time. Do you want to, for example, connect two displays at home without the need for an adapter via HDMI and DisplayPort, want to use the USB-C for a Thunderbolt dock and the USB-A for your wireless mouse? Easy peasy. Are you on the road and want some additional storage and a micro SD card reader for your drone footage? 5 minutes and you are ready to go. With fair prices ranging from $10 to $45, I would say it's extremely practical to have a whole set of ports ready for whatever you need at any given time. In the display department you only get a single option for now. The 60Hz IPS panel comes in a 3x2 aspect ratio with a very odd resolution. While the panel is not bad, I would consider it to be the weak spot of the Framework 13. It is certainly alright for office and productivity work, but everyone looking for some eye candy for your next Netflix marathon or something color accurate for a more creative type of work will be disappointed. I do not know if they have any plans in this regard, but it would be absolutely amazing if they would maybe offer an IPS option with wider color gamuts or even an OLED panel in the future. While the framework is also available with the i5-1340p or i7-1360p, our review unit comes with the i7-1370p and the 6 performance and 8 efficiency core layout turns the small 13-incher into a serious performer. Of course, the argument can be made if you need that much performance in such a small machine, but in that case, the lower end SKUs come into play. System performance is also excellent, and even apart from our PC Mark benchmarks, the framework is an exceptionally snappy machine with no hiccups whatsoever. The company's approach to absolutely zero bloatware or buggy command centers is refreshing as well, and gives the modular laptop a very streamlined user experience. Unfortunately, GPU performance is still the Achilles heel of Intel CPUs in 2023. And while the i7 comes with the biggest Iris Xe GPU with 96 execution units, it is hardly competitive anymore. In this regard, the AMD version will be very exciting, since the 780M in those Zen 4 chips is a very capable performer and could turn this one into a casual afterwork gaming machine. For the Intel version, you would have to stick to either pretty old titles or very low settings to get something even remotely close to playable frame rates. But in the end, this one is not intended as a gaming machine, which also becomes apparent in terms of fan noise. While you probably not hear the fan ever when doing anything like web browsing or general productivity or the like, as soon as you stress the CPU and GPU fully, the one fan will kick in audibly. I would consider it bearable, especially given the sheer amount of CPU grunt you will get in return. But most competitors are quieter under load. That said, temperatures are very acceptable, so this is the usual game of picking your poison. As always, if you want to dive deeper into the framework's temperature, fan noise and stress test behavior, please make sure to head on over to our written review. My colleague Alan put this guy properly through its paces, so make sure to check out his article. Away from the wall, this speedy productivity machine does not disappoint either, and with 8.5 hours in our Wi-Fi standard test, you should be well equipped for almost a full workday, lots of emails in your favorite cafe or even your next movie marathon. Alright folks, let's wrap this up for today. I must admit, for some reason, this one has a special place for me already. Maybe it is the feeling of making it your own when you partly assemble it yourself. Or maybe it's just that you somehow know better how your machine works because it is made so simple to get inside and upgrade or repair anything yourself. It is safe to say that Framework managed to show all of us that serviceability and repairability can go hand in hand with a well-rounded, well-performing and very convenient everyday notebook. Admittedly, it is not as sexy as some of the recent ultra-slim laptops or even something like a MacBook Air. But all of those come as they are with absolutely no chance of upgrading anything in the future. And this is where Framework excels on every level. 
Just being able to keep your laptop chassis across multiple CPU generations and upgrade as you need or if something better comes to market. Of course, with all of these modular concepts, you as a user are dependent on the manufacturer to keep supporting the idea. But since we are well within the third generation of the Framework 13, I would be confident that they could become a major player within this section of the market. In addition to the huge sustainability factor for this one, the modular I.O. concept is simply amazing. And overall, this is a very neat little everyday computing machine. I personally would wish for better displays in the future. And I am very excited for AMD's version as well. Framework also has a 16-inch version in the pipeline that looks insanely promising for power users, with even more modularity and customization options. But please guys, let us know what you think about the Framework 13 and the company's approach to sustainable modular personal electronics. Sound off in the comments below. That would be it for today. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.